Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at uh, how you can use Google Docs to create an interactive Venn diagram um, to explore a concept um, or to organize uh, thoughts for a large group of students all at the same time. One thing that Google Docs is really great for is its ability to um, to have multiple people interact with a document in real time. So for example, if you have uh, one or two people that want to work on a common document, you can open it simultaneously and you can see the typing of the other person. I'm assuming uh, as we start this that you have created a, a Google account, a Gmail account. Um, if you haven't, you can just go to gmail.com and create an account for yourself. Um, and once you've done that, you can uh, go to docs.google.com um, so docs, D-O-C-S dot Google, G-O-O-G-L-E dot com, and uh, sign in using that Gmail account, and you'll get a page that looks something like this. Um, for what we're doing, because we want to do this as a, um, uh, a Venn diagram, a Venn diagram is a, a picture, so I'm just going to go to Create, and I'm going to go to Drawing. At this point, uh, Google will open up a, um, a new drawing document. It'll title it Untitled Drawing, and we can change that in a little bit. Um, you'll see you've got a menu, as well as a number of tools you can choose from. Um, you also have a canvas, an area where you can actually draw. So I'm going to actually start off by uh, choosing a, um, my drawing tool here and adding a shape. Uh, being that we are doing Venn diagrams, I'm going to choose a shape that looks like a circle, and so I'll um, just click on that. Uh, sorry, I'll choose, there we go, uh, an oval. And uh, holding my shift key down so that it draws a perfect shape, I'm just going to drag my cursor down and create an oval. Likewise, I'm going to start on the other side, again holding my shift key down, and I'm going to draw. Oops, I'm going to choose my oval tool again, so shapes. Here we go, and I'm just going to draw another oval. Now at this point, I have two, uh, two uh, circles on the screen. However, as you can see, at this point, uh, neither of these circles is uh, transparent enough that we can really see that overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on my circle on the right, and then I'm going to hold my shift key down and click on the circle on the left, so I actually get both of them. Now, I'm going to go back up to my uh, toolbar here, and you'll see that one of my tools is a, a fill, a paint uh, can. What I'm going to do with that fill is just uh, click down on that, and I'm going to go to Custom Colors. Now I'm happy with this bluish gray, but I want to be able to see through it, so I'm going to actually drag this down just a hair um, so that it becomes partially transparent. If you want, you can change the color, so if you want a darker blue or a purpley color like that, you can go ahead and do that. And then when you press OK, you'll see that the two um, overlapping circles have now gone transparent. Now at this point, um, you have your uh, basic Venn diagram, but it'd be good to have a little bit of a, um, a title on this. So what I'm going to do is I'll just click off of the, um, the center so that you can see where the uh, circles are. And I'm going to go up to the top and I am going to um, click this text tool, this little letter T. And I'm just going to click down here in the circle and I'll just type animals that have legs and I'll press uh, enter and then over here I'll take my text tool again and I'll do maybe animals that have scales. Now at this point I'll maybe move these so that they're somewhat centered go ahead and do that and you'll see that I get a little reference mark bar that uh, helps me to tell when I'm near the center. The other thing that might make sense is to make that a bit bigger so you can tell it's the title. 
And so just up here where it says 14, I might actually select both of these. And then up here where it says 14, I might enlarge that to a 24 or even change to a, a, different, uh, a different font if that makes sense. Now at this point, I'm ready to actually uh, deploy this to our Moodle. So what I'm going to actually do now is um, up at the top right, there's a little box here that says Share. I'm going to press that button and it gives me a few options. Now many schools have uh, policies that prevent uh, students from having Gmail accounts. Um, so it makes it a little bit different or difficult to just add uh, students to, uh, to this by just punching their email accounts. That being said, we don't really need to worry about that because all I need to do is up here where it says private, I'm going to change that permission to anyone with the link. Now, notice I don't choose public on the web because I don't want uh, general public adding to my Venn diagram. I don't make it private because then nobody can get at it. Instead, I'm going to go anyone with the link. I'm going to press uh, this little checkbox to say allow anyone to edit um, because we want our kids to be able to add to this Venn diagram. Then I'm just going to press save. And at this point, it actually creates a link, and you can see it's highlighted right here, um, directly to this drawing. So I'm going to right-click on that link, and I'm going to choose Copy. Now, I'm going to go into my Moodle, and so I'll just uh, click to my Moodle space that I've got here. You can see I've got my editing turned on, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a URL. So I'll click on Add a Resource, I'll choose URL, and I'm just going to go maybe call this uh, Add to Our Venn Diagram. For a description, I'll maybe type please uh, click below. And then on the external URL, I'm just going to go ahead and just paste that address that Google gave me. Uh, for display, I'd like to keep Moodle in the um, background, so I'll choose in a pop-up. Um, I always find linking to external sites are better done in a pop-up, um, so the Moodle isn't removed from the uh, student's view. And I'm just going to go down and hit save and display. And there it goes, please click below, so I can click on that, I get a pop-up, and sitting in that pop-up is my drawing. Um, you can see I haven't given a title yet, and we can do that in a minute. Um, but now the students, after clicking that link, can start adding. And so you can give the students very simple instructions that all they need to do is click text box, click anywhere in the uh, in either of the bubbles, and they can add cat, for example, uh, here, and then maybe I might go under uh, um, text box, I'll go over here and I'll add a fish, and then maybe in the overlap I might uh, click the text box and add um, lizard. Um, and the kids can actually enlarge that just simply by uh, making the window bigger. Um, but what's really neat about this is the kids can actually do this all at the same time. So if you have a smart board in your classroom, you simply place this uh, diagram up on that smart board, and as kids log in, um, you start seeing um, uh, terms start to just magically appear all over this uh, diagram. Um, as kids add uh, simultaneously. It's a great brainstorming tool and uh, obviously what I've done would work just fine with any other type of graphic organizer that you uh, want to uh, create. Um, but now all you need to do from the kids point of view is simply um, direct them to your Moodle main page. Um, I'll just switch editing off so it looks like the kids would see it. Um, they'll now just see that simple link. All they have to do is click on that link, and just like that, the diagram opens with anything that's already been added to it. 
Um, I don't need to have a um, any special permissions for the kids. I don't need to um, have any special software included on the computers. I just simply click that link and the kids from wherever they are can simultaneously work on this uh, diagram. Um, as with any of these, please uh, feel free to drop me a note if you have any questions, and uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Until next time, take care.